a giant death trap. On October 7th, 2023, Mr. Beast posted this video with a contestant traveling through a series of obstacles. It was a video sponsored by a mobile game called Stumble Guys. Along with CGI, the pivotal moments in the trap included obvious cuts. The second trap ends with contestant Zack diving under a door. See how his leg is here at this point. When it switches to an alternate angle, his leg is here. See the shoes and no bag? Now here's a bag and no shoes. The video has more than 150 million views. Around half of Mr. Beast's videos are now game shows. $111,500. Their questionable reality is part of a history that goes back to a national scandal in the 1950s. It includes congressional hearings. The dramatic climax of the probe of fixed and rigged quiz shows. Castaways in Borneo. And the tribe has spoken. And a brief era when cheating on a game show was a federal crime. It's a hundred thousand dollars. In the 1940s, television had begun advances across the nation. And by 1955, a game show called The $64,000 Question debuted on CBS. Yes, The $64,000 Question. A contestant in an isolation booth was asked increasingly difficult questions. The design implied security and integrity. Questions were delivered straight from a bank vault to the set. It was sponsored by Revlon and was a fabulously successful TV show. Topping ratings with 16 million viewers, almost half of all houses that owned TVs were watching it. It started a quiz show boom. These shows included Dotto, a game where contestants answered trivia questions to unlock a connect the dots puzzle, the less said the better, and 21. Welcome back to 21. A show where two contestants appeared in isolation booths. Each answered questions for points, hoping to reach 21. It was sponsored by Geritol, a supplement that claimed to help with tired blood, tired blood. The show and trend peaked in 1957, when Time Magazine put long-running quiz champ Charles Van Doren on the cover. His streak began with the defeat of Herbert Stemple, our 29-year-old GI college student. You win $20,000. Congratulations. Van Doren became a family-friendly celebrity, TV's own health-restoring antidote to Elvis Presley, as part of the literary Van Doren clan, a family well-known in New York intellectual circles. After his $129,000 streak ended, an amount worth $1.3 million today, Van Doren became the Today Show's cultural correspondent. Just two months later, the shows were so popular that Time magazine was asking, are quiz shows rigged? There's all this rigmarole about locked vaults, one insider said. But who has the key to the locked vault? The producer, of course. Soon, everyone would be asking the same question. In summer of 58, Dotto went blotto. The show was canceled after a contestant found an answer-filled notebook backstage. A slew of shows were implicated in quiz guilt over the next few years, including 21. Herbert Stemple, the 21 contestant who had lost to Van Doren, made claims that 21 was rigged, with producers providing him questions and thorough stage direction. Your time is up, Herb Stemple, for five points, which would give you 21. What motion picture won the Academy Award for 1955? I don't remember enough about it. The producers claimed Stemple was blackmailing them. The U.S. House Subcommittee on Legislative Oversight began hearings on the quiz shows. The report began, it is one thing to arouse and hold the attention of the viewing public by programs which are openly and avowedly pure fiction and should be known as such to any reasonable person. It is quite another thing, however, when the airwaves, belonging to the people whose free use has been licensed by the Federal Communications Commission, are used deceitfully to exploit for private profit the interests of the viewing public. Stemple unloaded details of the coaching, in addition to questions and answers, like that they refused to turn on the air conditioning in his booth, thereby causing me to perspire profusely. Charles Van Doren arrives to apologize and attempt to explain to the millions whose friendship and respect he had won. 
Van Doren eventually admitted, in testimony, he instructed me how to answer the questions, to pause before certain of the answers. So let's say that was this fellow named Monko. On this first occasion, and on several subsequent ones, he gave me a script to memorize. And before the program, he took back the script and rehearsed me in my part. But his statement is a rueful and moving realization that for his wealth and fame, he paid a bitterly high price. The investigations resulted in Van Doren losing his job as a Today Show correspondent and in the cancellation of other quiz shows. Though he and others pled guilty of perjury in earlier testimony, he was freed. But more importantly, the Communications Act of 1934 was amended to include prohibited practices in case of contests of intellectual knowledge, intellectual skill, or chance, making it unlawful with intent to deceive the listening or viewing public with up to a year of imprisonment. The FCC was in charge, and rigging a game show was a federal crime. So what happened? Well, I was actually a huge Survivor fan, and I found the whole Stacey Stillman, Mark Burnett controversy to be super interesting. After the 1950s, a combination of falling ratings and public distrust kept game shows lower profile until a renaissance. The first person who refuses to eat a bug loses immunity for their tribe. The long-running show Survivor made its debut in 2000. Contestants competed in challenges, but crucially, Elimination occurred via vote at Tribal Council. In 2001, an original Survivor cast member claimed the show was rigged. Essentially, Stacy alleged that in the first season, in order to save a more ratings-friendly contestant... You know, he's fat, but he's, huh? he's good. Mark Burnett, the executive producer on the series, approached two other contestants on the beach and essentially said to vote for Stacy instead of that other contestant that they were planning on voting for. Years later, attorney George Bredicum started to wonder, did the old quiz show laws apply in that case? I filed a Freedom of Information Act request from 2000 to 2017. But the lawsuit entered into a private settlement before any FCC investigation commenced. This followed a pattern in the 2000s of a weakened quiz show law. The truth is they're actually not really fighting these reality shows using that, that statute. The closest thing that I found was there was a planned Fox game show called Our Little Genius. He also happens to be one of the smartest people in America. The planned 2009 show cast kids as quiz competitors to adults. One complainant to the FCC said their child had been registered as a calculus expert, but was suddenly switched to music theory. It says a producer passed them note names, like the Hemi Demi Semi Quaver, as the British name for the 64th note. The complainant ended, saying, I urge you to conduct an investigation. That investigation was ultimately abandoned by the FCC because what the production did was essentially said, hey, we're not going to broadcast this. If we don't broadcast this, you guys don't even have jurisdiction, and it's true. The FCC only has jurisdiction for broadcast. Cable, do whatever you want. Internet, nobody cares. You can shoot something for broadcast, but as long as it doesn't actually air, you're not in violation. And the timeline of game show investigations overlaps with a change in consumption options. Game shows being real was possibly just a window in time. Three, two, one. But does it matter? That was so... I'm speechless. Oh, Everyone holy. assumes that because I wrote this paper, I am in support of stronger regulations, stronger FCC enforcement. I, I really am not. Uh, I think we're at the point, everyone knows that what's on TV is often fake. Everyone knows what's on the internet is usually not real. Mr. Beast has just one FCC license to help coordinate radio communication for his productions. The Mr. Beast team did not respond to our multiple requests for comment. And in 1959, Geritol and Samanex sales soared while Van Doren sweated. Stumble Guys is currently number six in action on the App Store. I want to tell you about Stumble Guys. Hey everybody, my name's Phil Edwards. I'm the producer of this episode. If you're anything like me, you might be a little worried now that you have tired blood. Tired blood? 
tired blood. If you're a fan of Vox, whether you've been watching us for years or this is your first video, I think that our mission is still pretty clear that we want to give you high quality journalism and we want to keep it free. We don't want to put it behind a paywall. Now, most newsrooms, they'll make money through either advertising or subscriptions, but there are a couple big issues with those models, especially for a channel like ours. First, advertising goes up and down with the economy. We often only know a few months out what our revenue will be, which makes it pretty hard to plan. Second, we are not in the subscriptions business. Vox is here to help everyone understand complicated issues, not just the ones who can pay for stuff. We think it's important that everybody be able to get to it and we can't do it if we have a paywall. So if those values sound like your values, you can help us reach that goal. Help us get to 95,000 gifts by the end of the year by going to vox.com slash give now.